everybody. Rabbi Bill Hamilton here. Hi, Rabbi Hamilton. Great to be with you. Hi, Rabbi Star. Hi, Rabbi Hamilton and Rabbi Bonnie Cohen. Great to be with you both. So the question this week I want us to consider from the Torah portion has to do with this really dramatic moment, a transmission, I should say, from the blessing that a father, Isaac, is going to give to a son. And what's fascinating for me this year is the notion that the covenantal blessing is actually given at the end of the Torah portion, knowingly from Isaac to Jacob as he's on his way out of town. So what's all the fuss about the deceptive moment where Jacob dresses up like Esau and they engage in a very, very traumatic, dramatic, painful, filled with anguish sort of moment that we are driven to feel very great sympathy for Esau and for Isaac. Why is all that there if the covenantal blessing is actually going to be given at the end of the portion with both parties knowing fully well who each other is? An interesting question. I wonder if um, if part of it is wanting, you know, of course the Torah is going to lift up the covenantal blessing as the supreme, right? As as the thing that that we all want, um, that we all want to be part of. Um, but perhaps the the drama and the trauma um, is also highlighting the the realness of the pain associated with other kinds of uh, of connection or or promise um, that we have that aren't aren't simply the covenantal ones um, that the that the covenantal component is of course uh, essential um, but that the that there's also something beyond that as well that that has meaning and that has um, influence over over the way that we're oriented to our world and our existence we all love the bible because the stories are fabulous the characters are fabulous and that means there's got to be drama and that means there's got to be tension and ambiguity and conflict and obstacles these stories are marvelous just in terms of driving the reader to want to know, um, you know, who these people are and how real they are. You know, you shouldn't think that the more important a figure is, the more perfect they are. Mm. That in fact, it's quite the opposite. That you know, life is about choices, and people choose to do great things, and there are costs to everything in life. Mm. So you know, Yaakov is going to be this gigantic figure. But look how problematic he is. The book is actually getting better as a dramatic book in the sense of Avraham. It's very hard to connect to him on some level because he feels so kind of at the end of the curve kind of thing. Yaakov is so incredibly human. He's just a fabulous character. And I think there's a, there's a big Jewish teaching in there in terms of don't fear complexity. You can still do great things. The Jewish way is to say, okay, yeah, you made a bunch of mistakes. And the question is, okay, great. We know that. Now what are you going to do? And I and I, you know, I think for most of us, we feel that's kind of redemptive. That, yeah, we can make a bunch of mistakes, but we can keep going and hopefully do a bunch of great things too. The notion, as both of you point out, that there's a lot at stake other than beyond just the covenantal transmission. There's who am I and what am I here to do? And specifically the fact that Jacob has such difficulty working that out in terms of whether he is comfortable in his own skin or whether he really would rather be more like his brother. The fact that that, that takes such a long time, I think, is also helpful to us as we try to be comfortable in our own skin and recognize that who we are, warts and all, is probably um, who we're meant to be and that we just do our very, very best, and that that's probably going to be okay with the help of community, with the help of God, uh, with the help of tradition, with the help of uh, with fellowships of all kinds. So as we internalize these lessons, may we find in the week's Parsha ahead a lot to chew on and a lot to appreciate as we make our way toward what we hope will be a grateful Thanksgiving. Good job, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Great to be with you.